the afternoon. Just drove for all your own cameras round for milking. This is the barn empty. This is me scraping up and Josh is on the G115 there putting the sand in. So we have put no sand in this week. Toby put the sand in before he went to Benidorm. And that was Sunday, Sunday morning, and it is now Friday afternoon and we're just topping up on sand. He's doing that cube, cool. I'm just sweeping this lot out. And then they're coming here in a minute. Right, that is a yard scrape. I've got to take this one up um, up on the autumn unit in a minute. And uh, you've got a problem with, uh, there's a bit of loose people got this on the Fords. Bloody pool stops broke. I've got to drive him three mile up the road, fill out a fuel. We've got no fuel tank down there at the moment. We bought a fuel tank about a year ago and they think it's got a split in it. So we've got someone coming out, look at that, get a new fuel tank. Massive pain in the ass. It is driving tractors out the road to fill up or bring down five gallon or what have you. Got to shut these doors. Josh is coming in with the sand. He's getting a load of sand over there. And then um, we're all done down here. I think Josh is going to feed the cars down here this afternoon. Two's back to work tomorrow. Tim and Emma up on a spring unit and Mia, Stefan, Tom are up on the autumn unit. Josh is down here, calf and dad are milking. Phoebe's got the afternoon off. She usually milks with calf or Emma. It's all women usually in the parlor. So dad being in there is quite one off today. Josh is usually up on the autumn unit, but he's down here this afternoon. So once I've done this, I will go, I'm going to go at Reed's, Reed's Acre. I've got uh, the straw choppers, the two straw choppers, what we've got. Uh, one's got a bent PO shaft and one's got a broken electrical box on it, so I'm going to take these two up there and get that done. This is the sand in the cubicles once the dispenser is put in. I'll show you an up close in a minute. I have a sand dispenser working. I'm going to let the cows back in now, what have been milked. They're all up here in the collecting yard. And then they can go down the barrier. All the muck has been swept from these passageways. Here, here. Cubicle and passageway each shed. And we sweep it out into those ramps there. And this is just an open bare bit of yard here. Well, we were going to feed him once, but now it's just open and the cows to walk out through the right to the field. get a little bit dusty, a bit cobwebby, but these are still spotless. This is it, this is the end product. He's got a little bit of straw on the sand, well it's not great because it's harder to come out. That's quite wet but it does dry it when he go on it. Like you want it dry really, but it's hard to get dry sand. It is what it is when he dump it. But it keeps everything clean too. Like all these railings and that, chucking sand in it, all sand, so corrosive. Like I said before, your yard scraper wheels do take a fresh in and you get through a rubber a little bit quicker than usual. But apart from that, you cannot beat sand, really. It is just, 
you know, it's great. But it's everywhere, because look at this ramp where I've just pushed all the muck in the lagoon. Sand here, I see. It's drying out nice, I think. It's nice and warm, this is. And this is all sand in this lagoon. We gauged out. I've got another video of a slough down in here, gauging all this hay, long reach, on a little one. And muck spread has gone along that wall there. That was last summer. Now there's a few tonnes of sand back in there now. There's a bit of a pile here. But we're on clay ground too, so sand, chucking sand on the fields to help out a little bit. If we were on, like say we had a sand lagoon up on the spring unit where it's like green sand soil anyway, it might mess the pH up a bit or something like that. But this is what you deal on this ground. Bought two of these lazy arms last week. One for here, one up on a spring unit, and the one will come with the tankers up on the autumn unit. So we link that up. That's all set, ready to go for the cows, for Toby to jump on a tanker and go tanking. Probably gonna, Toby, when he gets back, back to work, he's probably gonna do a lot of hedge cutting, a lot of tanking this week. Be good to get a lot of the hedge cut wrapped up. It's a mammoth task, cutting hedges on our all three farms. Big, big job, but um, you do a couple of days out, you do get on through it. Right, I'm going on a three mile road trip now at 15k. It's fuel. Right, this is the autumn unit. Just got up here. It took me about 10 minutes. This case there have been milked. This is a cubicle, it's a little bit thinner pastures, like I said, don't make a massive difference, only to the feet really. This is cell case back scans and mm, very different, only if it's really really wet, it's sawdust. But that's not actually sawdust, that is rope straw chopped up. And we've got a bodmin sort of style thing over there. It's like the same as bodmin but a different mate. All these cases are fed for the day. Mainly size, you've got a little bit of maize in the diet, but not a great deal. Still waiting for most of the maize to come in up here. They're all eating happily, yo. Shed is pretty much the same as our other one, but a little bit older and not galvanised still. A few more water troughs too, what I think does actually make a difference. We've got a lot more water troughs in the shed actually. Used to have automatic yards, uh, electric um, automatic yard scrapers down through the middle, like chain drive, but we pulled them out. And then we just scrape it now. With this scraper here, what we bought a month ago, and he's a real good scraper, this one. It's Coyote, we've got a new yard scraper with it. It's Coyote 4520, DK 4520. Reads Agri Services, that's who we get our yard scraper charters off of. And our yard scrapers, brand dealers too. And we get all our bits and bobs. We've got a real nice uh, shop out there where you can walk around and get all your bits and bobs and whatnot. He's trying to slightly smaller than all our other yard scrapers, but he's a good tractor. He's uh, four wheel drive. He's got real, um, you know, good vision on it. Exhaust pipe's down there, so out the front you can see wing mirrors, no one's hit it yet, what's good. Fuel tank here. This is inside. So it's different inside to most uh, tractors. You've got your brake this side, it's a clutch, and then you've got a forward and reverse pedal. So you go forward, you're pushing that pedal, you go in reverse, you push that pedal. And then you've got your gears here, the high, low, medium. You've got a hand throttle here, hand throttle here actually. And you've got your park here, your lights, your horn and that, all your buttons here. It feels small, like you're up against the windows quite a lot. See that? And you're pretty much on the back window. It's got a heated back window, what's good? Because the first thing I do when I get in the other track is wipe the back window. Just one step to get out too, what's tucked inside so you can't beat off going down a cubicle channel. Got a seven foot yard scrape on the back of this one too. You have got two spools if you want, but we'll never use it. Nice little toolbox on the back. But we haven't been cleaning it off much. He's got a little bit of dirt on, but he is staying relatively clean, I reckon. Because there's a lot more muck too on this um, down these passageways. Because they're thinner, they're a little bit deeper. Like I said, the feet affects the feet a little bit. But, um... If we're going to put another shed up, it would be one like this, I reckon, because it's just cheaper and you bang more cubicles in. And that's what we like doing. And this one's got two feet, four feed barriers, so two centre barriers. This is the second one, and he's loaded up. So, yeah, the Coyote, we're really happy with it. He's a smart tractor. There's our Cypher Pell Sawdust Suspenser, what we also bought for Reeds. Again, he's a plant mech 320 bed. 
he's good. He's got a brush on front. Pretty much the same as when you have a bobman. He's got a brush on front and he pays out. So he's got a little yard scraper on the front and he turns round in that cubicles. Tight spot on the spot. He's a good machine. He's loaded up with sawdust ready for tomorrow morning. Chuck a bit around. Keep chucking a little bit down just in case the cow's going to sit down. And we've got this feed bar, this skirt shed here full of sawdust. And also next door we've got the blend ready to go into. Now it's the same blend as what we've got down on all your rain carving. So a lot easier there too. So you just scoop up and scoop out and go. The cows here just come out of the parlor all munching away. They'll be going out after this. These cows are out day and night still. Right, it's calf feeding time again. Just check around the calves. We have got a few calves. These ones here went out first this morning. And they had a bit of crypto around their asses. But they have, tell you what, he's dried up. So I bagged this one here, I bagged. So look, he's, well, he's definitely hungry, aren't he? Yeah, he's drying out. Yeah, keep an eye on that. Like I said, keep fresh water going into them because it's not even cold yet, it's warm. And that crypto are really stinking to them when it's cold. So I'm putting a little bit of penicillin in the milk. A lot of people are dead against that. You know, I get a bit of um, a bit of back chat in the comments, I reckon, on this video, but it does work. I don't care what people say about um, their immunity and all that. You put a little bit in there, not too much. It does work and it helps the calves out, especially with all these heifers here, see? Don't want any germs spread through them. This one here is freshly calf one. So if he's effort, oh yeah, effort. Good. Yeah, they're doing well, but it's good weather for it, isn't it? It's all tea feeders now on all the farms. It's just easier. We used to bucket feed all the time, single pens, but now we're in pens are like seven or eight or five. Yeah, we got milk bar feeder here, but we got the peach teats. What a good, and we use them on all the farms too. We get through quite a lot. We buy boxes of 50 all the time, because the 50 teat feeders up on the spring unit, all these feeders, we've got lots of feeders. So it does come at a cost. You've got to keep replacing them, but they do do well. And it is just so simple. All right, so this is a new calf here. It's a bonus, he's always stood out and he is actually sucking hard. And then they're soft, see, compared to the Mark Mill Bar teats. They're longer and they've got a dimple on the end. So they're good, and he's gone straight on. This one's a bit dark. There you go. Look at that. Yeah. Go on then. My son. You just got our patience to stand and watch them too. No good like putting them on in and going off and doing something else. You just got to stand here and make sure we drink their full two and a half years. And then too. Right, so an hour later, this is back in the cubicle shed again. Cows sat on the sand. So this is going to be great. See, when we get in the winter, when we get um, that shed out there, the cows that come out here for milking, that will all be barned over. Nothing's going to go outside at all in the winter, in the rain. So going in the milking parlour, they're not going to have rain water dripping off them or anything. It's just going to be all under one hood. It's going to be great. Just be a lot easier washing them off and whatnot. Nothing getting damp. Look at that. They are happy cows. It's going really well. This farm is going really well. It's like how you want it when um, on wet grains. You want them, they've been out on grass and they've milked well this year. And when they've come in, they've milked well. They're all milking extremely well. So the effort we're putting in, like the extra like cost for sand, for scraping out more, for just taking out the muck, and that is just, you know, it's worth it as long as you get the milk. That's why you've got to be a good eight and a half thousand litres. It's six months on, six months off, six months on the grass, six months in the shed. 
if not longer in a shed on a wet year. So these cows have been in and out all summer due to the wet weather. But yeah, that's great, that is. Completely different story to the spring unit. They are just out day and night most of the year. They come in for about three-ish months, but they never come in, come in. If we have a dry day in the middle of the winter or a dry week, they will go out and we'll clean the shed site and that. Right, so I just checked dry cows and I was driving out and we got tracks all the way around the farm, like they're stone tracks. And this is one of our tracks and this is a field what we spread slurry on. And what we do on this farm, because this is a wet farm and we've got to get the slurry out in the winter, is the dry-ish field, so this is a dry-ish field, he's nowhere near like up on the spring unit. He's still quite soft and quite slippery. Just massive um, valley down through there and we landfilled that back along about three or four years ago. Just about see the texture in the grass there. But we drive, we've got loads of fields like this. We didn't put fences along and we chose not to like around all the fields. It means we've got to do a lot of electric fences like this when we've got cattle out there. But in the winter, we can just drive straight off. And we've done this in the wet weather. Just drive straight off with a tanker and just tank straight over there, turn around and come back. And then if you ever get in trouble, wheel spinning or whatever, get stuck, you can get out on the track because it is very, very dodgy ground. It's clay ground. You can get caught out even with years of experience. And we have done in this field plenty of times. We've been stuck down the bottom there because it changes. When it comes to clay ground like this, the ground changes every year and every spring. So some bits what are dry are not dry uh, from the year before. So you think you're like you're doing well and then you go and hit a wet spot or you go out there and you don't make a mark all day get used to it and then you go out there near the end of the day and then just bog down and get stuck it is just like that it is hard to explain but it's hard going but you should, when you've got to get muck out you just you know it just you just pull it off don't you you've got to do it here are the february 23 born heifers from the spring unit Got a lot more black and white in there this year, that's what you like. Got more Irish genetics. Still got a few like that. I think that's the first one born actually. He's the oldest. He has got a gammy eye, I've got to do his eye. We've had good eyes this year compared to last year. Last year I think I've done about 30 out of 100 with eyes. One or two now, well just that one I've seen today actually. That's the first one I've seen today, that one. All the rest are looking alright though. been giving them cake not religiously but i've been giving them cake when the weather's rough when it's been dry and i'll put them on fresh grass i've missed it for a couple of days but now i'm coming out here every day just to keep an eye on them because um we have to pull out of this grain we're meant to pull out first of october but the week's looking good so we're just going to go week by week day by day after that and uh because the grass is still good if you look at this grass see this is all organic never gets no fertilizer never gets reseeded but it's doing these calves well. So, um, yeah, we'll just take it. Next week's good, so hopefully you stay out here all next week. But then we'll take it day by day after that if we do have a bit of rain, because it is wet grain, this grain. Well, that's all the Februarys, and I've got all the Marches in another field, and all of the Aprils in the other. But this is the biggest group, and this is uh, 99 here. In two sorts of cow out today keep moving them on all the time this wet weather so wet is there see that that is just a puddle anyway we're going to get them out of that field we're going to put them in the that field heifers and then we're going to put some younger ones in there because that's wetter that's drier just go around the wet tubes Toby's got a bag of cake, he's shaking. Now I'm on behind. So these are going to come out of there, and then we're going to put a lot of little ones in there. It's a bit wetter, but a bit more uppy downy with these feet. See that where I've got behind them? The trod there. The little ones would be better on us. Then we play it day by day there, and next week's looking good. But afterwards, it's day by day, and we're coming in. Really, it carries on. Fish on this farm anyway, because we ain't got much dry ground. 